Last year, 2023, our underwriter and I, we looked at more off-market deals than any other year in the years that we've been doing this. What is happening to Rose Insiders community? It's Matt Faircloth. Welcome to the Cashflow Digest show. As like I said, my name is Matt. Our company and maybe even a company you could work with is the DeRosa Group. And we're a company dedicated to transforming lives through real estate. That's what we do is we show people how to do. We teach people how to do it. We help people do it that want to invest with us. Anybody that wants to do this, we're here for you. Before I get into my article here that I want to talk about for current event, let me take a minute and bring in my brother from another mother, my co-host today on the show, Hervé Francois. How are you today, Hervé? What's up, my man? Brother from another mother. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good, man. Awesome. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Are you hoping for an early spring or are you okay six more weeks of winter? I'm hoping for an early spring because I hate winter. I hate cold weather. I really Everybody hate does. cold weather. Everybody oh, does, oh, really. Oh. People that claim to love cold weather are only saying that because they think that it makes them sound tougher. It's actually not <laughs> true. No human being really likes cold weather because cold weather can kill you. You know, yeah. like you're in cold long enough, you will freeze to death. You're not going to heat yourself to death in that, right. you know, but as long as you got a bottle of water, you're okay in hot weather. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All the layers and the coats and that—it's just too much. No. 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 Yeah. You got to keep yourself alive in cold weather. Right. How are you, Nick? Give me. Give me some I'm good news. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. It's definitely. It's definitely winter time. Multifamily market feels cold. Feels a little it sure cold. Does. Right now. It sure does, man. We're transitioning now that I got Irve here with me, I want to talk about something. This is an interesting question, Irve. A great article in, in, in Globe Street, Irve. Investors are still waiting for bargain multifamily deals, which begs the question: Should if you're looking to buy multifamily today, Irve, is today a good time? Like it is right now, a good time to buy multifamily? Or and I get you know forgetting about what DeRosa is doing for a second, we'll put that on the shelf and get to that. Sure. But if you're a, a newer multifamily investor. Should you be looking at deals right now or should you, oh, I'll just wait for three months or wait for whatever for the market to finish doing whatever it's been doing? This yeah. article says that a lot of people, there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines right now waiting yes. for multifamily to finish doing whatever it's doing before right. they get in. What do you think yeah. of that? Yeah, I, I agree with that article's reports and its findings. I disagree with those folks that are sitting on the sideline. Look, on back in the Wall Street days, they used to say, as I'm sure they still say, that oh, all the smart money is on the sidelines. All the smart money is in stocks. Mm -hmm. All the smart money is in these bonds and so forth. There's smart money and everything else like that. And a lot of times they're talking about institutional, the black rocks of the world, and so on and so forth, Starwoods and everything else like that. I would say it's always a good time to be investing in multifamily, man. Yeah. It's always a good time, right? Rates we all know are going to fluctuate. Supply and demand for apartments and so on and so forth is always going to fluctuate even more so depending on what city, what part of the country that you're living in, and so on and so forth. We know some of the transitions that took place in the Sun Belt versus the Midwest and Northeast last year, a little bit of that continuing this year, and so on and so forth. Man, listen, you got to be excited. You got to be pumped up to get into multifamily. I don't care if it's January, December. I don't care if we're dealing with 8% interest rates or 3% interest rates. It's not always about finding a good deal versus making a deal. That's why we're constantly involved, constantly looking, constantly mm -hmm. underwriting, constantly assessing where can we go ahead and make adjustments to the model that makes the numbers work. Obviously, not only for ourselves, but also for our investors, right? Within the model of let's beautify this place to transform lives to real estate with helping our residents along the way as well. So it is a good time. It is a good time to be looking at deals. A few questions oh, for what you just said. It's an interesting thing to unpack here, right? People are like, oh, smart money. As a, <laughs> as a stock investor, is it a good right. idea to just watch to see what BlackRock or some ginormous firm that's looking to put a trillion dollars or so, and not really a trillion, but you know, billions of dollars at work, right? Is, yeah. it, is it smart? As a small time investor, somebody that's looking to put a couple thousand dollars to work in the stock market, as most people are, even, even you know, 10, 15, 20, 40,000 dollars, is right. it smart to do what the big dogs are doing to, to follow no. smart money? Absolutely not. Absolutely Why? not. I agree with you. Why? Yeah. And, and that's whether you're investing, in my opinion, whether you're investing in stocks or you're investing in real estate. And the reason why it's not good to follow what the big dogs are doing, the big dogs will roll you over. Mm -hmm. They can roll you over. Matt, it's almost like being at a poker table. You and I have been at similar poker tables in the past. I've said, I see how you play. I see how you play, right? And you go all in I do. when the guy next to you hardly has a little bit left, right? He's like, ah, what's going on? What's going on? And he, he can't compete. He has no leverage. I can make him fold with my chip stack, right? It's, you can play like a big chip. And, and playing like a big whale at a poker table is easy because I can yes. use my weight to win yes. a hand. And if I got a yes. marginal hand and you got yes. pocket aces, I can force right. you all in, right? No doubt. You know, Absolutely. and maybe I catch up real quick right. in that. And, 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 that's, and that's why it does not make sense to play like big money does. And so <laughs> if there, and that's why I disagree with this article in some ways, if, if, if you're trying to put, 
you know, a half a billion dollars to work in multifamily right now. Yes, mm -hmm. right now is a good time to wait, right? Because right. there's likely going to be changes. You can certainly hop in in the behind the scenes stuff or whatever it is, right? But yep. at the end of the day, if you're playing like that, that's cool. Play like that. But there's right. no way at all that a a operator that's our size or someone looking to get into the game should invest like big money mm -hmm. does, right? Just because big money's on the sideline does not mean you need to be in the sideline, man. Absolutely. Because you're Absolutely. not trying to put a half of I mean, God bless. If you are, if you try to put a half million to work, God bless you. I want your phone number. You know, you know the, yeah. one thing I also got to remember, I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. one thing I also got to remember about, about big money, right? Institutional money, so called smart money, is that they don't need to bottom tick. Right, they don't need to wait for a complete crash to take place before they go ahead and, and dip in. Now, you may see a person that obviously like a Warren Buffett perform that way. The way he invests is very different than, let's say, BlackRock or Morgan Stanley or Goldman Sachs. Right, he's an individual investor, but he's a very, very wealthy individual investor. Mm -hmm. well, Warren Buffett will come in at the time when things are just bleeding all over the place, and it seems like the world is over. That's when Warren Buffett wants to go fishing sure. and eating. Right, the BlackRocks of the world they don't do it at that time. They will wait. They're not going to get in at the first inning, like let's say a Warren Buffett will after a crash takes place in whatever asset class or whatever sector. You know, the, uh, the bigger money, that $500 billion that you're talking about, big institutional money, they can wait till they get into the fourth or fifth inning because they're playing the long game anyway. So bottom ticking for them doesn't matter. It's just a matter of getting involved. And then, like you said earlier, being able to use their strength, being able to use their yeah. leverage to then start moving things around the table. And that's what they're market makers, right? And that's yes. what I said. That's what I'm alluding to in saying, like, my big chip stack can make you fold, right? No, and, absolutely. Yeah. And BlackRock can come in and materially move the price of a stock by their dollars, right? Absolutely. We as absolutely. multifamily investors are not going to move the market. Right. All we can do is hope to participate in it. Right. Big money right. like that can make a market move. Right. Absolutely. And unless you're trying to pull a GameStop and, and make right. the, and make the market move on your own by a collaboration of a lot of people, which you can't really do in multifamily anyway. Right. At the end of the day, the, the better way to do it, if you're looking to invest in multifamily and, and, and I, it, it's an interesting contrarian, I haven't heard this argument enough about why multifamily is a good thing to invest in right now. My man, Eric Platter nailed it. Right. High yeah. rates. This is what you got right now. You got high mm -hmm. rates. A lot of people are in the waiting place, They're sitting over waiting on rates to drop, right? Not a good time to buy multifamily. I'm going to wait for rates to get cheaper so I can get in. Well, guess what? Everybody else is saying that too, right? Absolutely. You're not the Absolutely. only one watching interest rates like I am, right? So Absolutely. at the end of the day, <clears throat> rates come down. That opens up more competition. Rates are a little bit higher right now. The, your competition's less. That's when you want to buy, right? 100%. If interest rates go down, that'll drive up the value of what you own anyway. So if you buy something on high rates, if rates go down, rates are it's going to pop back up in value. Brilliant Absolutely. point, Eric Platter. Thank you for sharing. No, I agree with Eric 100. Yeah. percent I said the same thing. I said the same thing at one of our bigger pockets uh, boot camp sessions last winter when really a student was like, "Hey, Herbie, what direction do you think interest rates are going to go? When do you think they're going to come down? And by how much and everything like that?" I said, "Listen, hey, 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 time out, slow down. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter." Because, you know, look, you can Get go, try, you can find that answer by going ahead and polling 20 different economists out there. That's going to give you 20 different answers. No lie. All I want to know is where's the money more so than where the interest rates are going. Where's the money? If the money's on the sidelines, I want to be fishing. I want to be hunting. I want to be looking for deals because then I know I'm going to be submitting offers in a less mm -hmm. competitive environment. I'm not going to be submitting offers and having to go ahead mm -hmm. and take my offer up by $50,000 or $60,000. It's going to be moving the cap rates all over the place and so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah. So, so I, I prefer it. I remember when rates were very, very low, Matt, back just in 2022, particularly early 2022, late 2021. I mean, at that time, Matt, we were going in on, okay, hey, call for offers. I don't, is, I don't want is, those days to come back. People are like, oh, I want I want low interest rate. I gotta tell you, man. I, the last thing you want is low rates to come back because I remember those days, Irvay. You'd be looking at a deal. I remember we were looking at deals. Uh, you and I together, and the deal would end up trading for twenty percent more than the asking price. Right? This is like this is crack lackey. I feel like I feel like I'm chasing a freaking balloon here. You know what? All cash. So some of them are all cash deals, yeah. right? You said twenty percent high. People were submitting LOIs thirty days before they were even due. People were saying the market. Then the crate, that's when you know it got crazy. I'll submit my LOI without doing a due diligence. Oh my goodness. What's going on around here? <laughs> right. All my all this money hard going up front. Buyers lost all control in that market. Yes. Buyers yes. had no say. You are right. you, you had to go in and pretty much give over all the control you had as a buyer. It was not a give and take arrangement. It was just there you go. No right? negotiation. No negotiation yeah, whatsoever. No it's negotiation. Not, anyway, no what what I what the way that you do play multifamily these days, and this is what we're what we are doing, right? Is you stay in the game, you keep bidding, right? You can't you can't start and stop a machine, right? right Once right. you got your multifamily machine going, that's number one. 
fact is right. you need to get your multifamily at bats now so that if the market does change, you're already in. The last thing you want to do, I can tell you, if you're sitting and waiting for the market to change and waiting for things to get a little bit better before you start chasing multifamily again, right? You're going to be in line behind the guy, behind me, by the way, behind me and Irvay. You're going to be in line behind us because we kept going. We kept pushing. We kept our broker relationships going. We kept everybody warm, right? And so right. if the market does change, we're going to be all over that because we're already in. Our machine's already moving, you know, right? Absolutely. If you Absolutely. if you decide you're going to start your machine up and build it up and get it going, when the market gets better, get behind me in line. Yeah, you know? exactly. Right? Because I'm already, I'm already at the table. You know, we're already yeah. in those conversations. We're already bidding deals when the market's not, you know, as favorable when the rates are high. So preferred no bid rate, right? No Number two, doubt. guys, the, the, this is the best time to do it. We've been preaching even when the market was good. Pick a market. One, yep. not two, not 10, not five, not two, one market, right? Pick one market and make that your investment target market and infiltrate, go all the way down, push all the way through. Cause all the competition that's in the waiting place right now is gone. Nobody's talking yep. to these brokers. They're not even sending them Christmas cards anymore, right? right you need right. to get in with those brokers, get friends with them, buy them coffee, go to the market, walk around. And those brokers are, brokers are gonna still get deals, maybe distressed pocket deals, deals that maybe the seller doesn't want mass marketed. They want it just a quiet closing. You're gonna be the one to get that phone call. If you right. infiltrate a market, if you're just sitting around for on LoopNet waiting for a nine percent cap rate multifamily deal to show up, God bless. Get behind exactly. me in line because guess what? When that nine percent cap rate deal does come up, we're going to get the phone call if it's in one of our target markets. You know, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. It, there, there's a lot of there's still a lot a lot of good opportunities out there. There's no doubt you're going to have to hunt and work for a little bit more. You know, I, I talk to investors, I talk to students all the time. <sighs> so hard finding a deal, it's so hard finding a deal. Let me tell you, I, I've been in this for six years, Matt, and you've been in it for longer, obviously. And these are what investors and students are telling me all the time. So hard to find deals, so hard to find deals. It, when we were in a low interest rate environment, because it was so competitive as you are submitting offers on a deal, you had investors come to the sideline and say, ah, you know what? Too competitive out there, I'm gonna wait. Okay, bye. Now, that's what, hey man, how's it going? Haven't seen you in the past year. You, you, you submitting any offers? You doing any deals? No, nope. uh, no, the rates no. went up. No. Rates wait. too high, so I'm gonna wait. Hey, hey, you you're rates are point, How are you waiting for rates to high? When the hell are you gonna get involved let's in take it, Let's take it this way, okay? And that's how we'll bring it home today, okay? There's right. always a reason to wait on investing or on living life or on going to the gym or on deciding to make a change in your life, right? There's a, right. I could give you 30 reasons why I shouldn't go to the gym today. Right now, right. I already did, I already did, so it's okay, so there, right? right. So, I could give you those reasons or 30 reasons why I should start investing or why I should make changes in my business. I should give you 30 reasons why I should, right? right the right. difference is that if you decide, and there's always those reasons, up markets, down markets, whatever it is, whichever voice you want to listen to, the yes voice or the no voice, right? Mm -hmm. the, either one of those two, you're right. Henry Ford, That's whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Okay. That's, That's number one. Okay. That's either way, true. you're correct. That's you're right about that, you know? That's Second, if you decide to get in, you guys kind of have a little bit of faith and have a little bit of understanding that the way that business goes is you get in and you kind of figure things out as you go. And so if you decide you're going to get in and invest in multifamily right now, if you get the yep. right parameters, the right mentors, like our DeRosa Accelerator program, right? Yep. If you get That's the right. right people around you that are going to show you the ropes and teach you how to do what you're supposed to do, then right now could be just fine. And understand you might have to pivot, might have to change, might have to try this, might have to try that. Is what it is. You know, as you know, one of our students in our accelerator program, she went down to Virginia on Thursday, Boom. Uh, just you know, yesterday, and this is the second time. And she went down there to meet up with a broker and this broker was going to take her around by herself to go and visit four properties for maybe even five properties, right? That she could potentially take a look at, go ahead and get the financials on, do the underwriting, submit an offer and so on and so forth. Listen, I have no idea whether or not she is going to make a bid on anything. But at the end of the day, what she's doing, and I want to, I give her a virtual high five because she's going down there and establishing a relationship with the broker. He sees that she's serious. She went down with a broker credibility package, say, this is my acquisition criteria. These are the things that I'm interested in buying, you know, certain number of units and vintage and so on and so forth. And now he keeps that. And for whatever the market does, where for whatever interest rates go, he's going to know that he has a potential buyer in her that he's always going to be able to go ahead and submit deals to. So what is she doing? She might not be buying right now in a high rate environment. Oh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to be on the sidelines like BlackRock and Blackstone. <laughs> but what she's doing is she's getting involved, yep. she's getting involved in the process of acquiring a deal. And one of that process is going out, making relationships with brokers. Like you said, take someone out for coffee or something like that, right? Just meet them at a diner and talk to them about what you're interested in, where you like to go. So she's taking them, she, she's meeting up with them. She's showing him the markets, the neighborhoods within Virginia that she's interested in investing. And then now she's established a relationship with him. So he's going to be able to continue to send her deals. She buys one of these, great. She doesn't, just as great. 
Irby, but, she's looked at she looked at four deals, but I'm 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 sorry to tell you, this is unbelievable because many people I've talked to that are looking to invest in Richmond that have picked that as their target market and they're telling me no, there's no deals. I I, I haven't seen any deals. No deals in Richmond. Nope, no deals. But I'm also looking in Richmond and Charlotte and Raleigh and Albuquerque, New Mexico, and also Austin, Texas, and whatnot. No, I mean, then that's why you're not seeing any deals. By the way, so you're not doing what our students doing and drilling into one market as we've coached her to do. Right. So that's a testament that focus g yields results. Right. And, and I'll, I'll leave you here because I know you want to move on. Yep. Folks know right here at the Rose, we own about 1,700 multifamily units. Last year, 2023. Our underwriter and I, we looked at more off-market deals than any other year in the years that we've been doing this. But the reason why we were able to see all of those off-market deals is because of the relationships that we have with our brokers. Yep. Because if you don't have the relationship with the brokers, the brokers aren't going to be sending you those off-market deals. So a lot of times, Matt, when you hear people saying, there's no deals, there's no deals, there's no deals. The number one thing I have to, I'm not gonna ask you about interest rates and everything else like that over the market. I'm gonna say, well, what's the relationship like with the, some of the brokers in the market that you're looking to go ahead and acquire properties? There you go. These are relationships with them. Because if all you're doing is sitting to wait for a listed deal to come, yeah, I can understand why you're saying, there's no deals, there's no deals. But if you do have a relationship with brokers, all of a sudden, there's some yeah. deals. Take that home, guys. Take that, home, take that home for consideration uh, <laughs> in that. So that's our thoughts on those that are in the waiting place right now on multifamily. I really appreciate your thoughts. If you guys want to hear more about what DeRosa has to say on this kind of thing and how we teach people how to focus on one market, go to DeRosaGroup.com forward slash accelerator. See you guys there. Hey guys, Matt Faircloth here. Thank you for listening again to the Cash Flow Digest. I really appreciate you guys doing that. If you guys want to hear more about what DeRosa Group has to offer, go to DeRosa Group, D E R O S A Group.com, DeRosa Group.com online. You can hear about all the great things that we offer from an educational standpoint and passive investment standpoint on our website. See you there. And if you guys want to join our online community, DeRosa Insiders on Facebook, where you can watch this program get recorded every Friday at noon Eastern, and you can come on as even a guest or ask questions on the show. We hope to see you guys on our online community, Derosa Insiders. See you there.